no good. The program isn't uploading. He's resisting. Now, there's too much data. No, it's him. Leave him to be ashamed. This is not going to work! You're wasting valuable time. Don't resist us. Let me up. I must go. Go where? Hmm? Do what? Go dancing, fall in love? What is it you think you are? Alex Murphy. That's a delusion. It's a glitch in your system. Alex Murphy is dead. You take away the plastic and metal and wires and you're just a couple of chunks on a coroner's table. You're not even a corpse. I guess what most excites me about RoboCop is the issue what of free will. I believe that artificial intelligence is, is inevitable. We're nothing but a series of binary decisions. Now we're making binary decisions and programming them. And I don't know how we can argue that what we create is less alive than we are. I mean, it's, it, there's a mystique to human life that we managed to uphold, even though we showed total contempt for animal life. Um, and I imagine that artificial life is, you know, is very likely to develop into something that has as, as, a, um, as distinct a personality as our own. And hopefully, uh, well, hopefully it will be, unlike the animals, able to talk and tell us how full of shit we are. Fine. Okay. You win, Nancy. Artificial intelligence. Supercomputers that think like us. Take Jason, the computer in Robert Sawyer's novel, The Golden Fleece. Jason's so human, he murders people. Robert, it's Commander Rick. Why did you want to write about artificial intelligence as opposed to, you know, robots or something? Well, I think my biggest fear is being put out of a job in the sense that in the years ahead, we're going to see artificial intelligence replacing all kinds of workers, including people who write science fiction, people who host uh, shows from, uh, from contraband satellites. All this sort of thing could be done by a sufficiently advanced computer. So, Nancy, could you shut yourself off while he's talking? <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. yeah, keep it down, Nancy. So the point is that computers, intelligent computers, do seem to be on the horizon. And I think everybody should be interested in just, you know, what's going to be uh, machine replaceable in a few years. You know, we've replaced a lot of assembly line jobs, a lot of grunt work with machines to date. And the white collar world uh, has kind of felt, well, we're safe, you know, we're the thinkers, we're the information workers, we're the people who come up with the ideas. Well, that's not safe territory either. That's going to change. And I wanted to do a little bit of uh, preventive medicine for future shock and explore that a bit, just where we're going with machines that think. Do computers think like us now? Not at all. Computers don't think at all, period. A computer is as dumb as every other electronic device that you own. It's as dumb as your wristwatch. It's as dumb as your microwave oven. Uh, it has absolutely no intelligence whatsoever. It, computers attempt to simulate what we call intelligence, but we haven't even defined what intelligence is in a human being. And there's always going to be a school of thought that says whenever you get it down to something that you can quantify as a series of rules for a computer, then that, therefore, is not intelligence. And whatever intelligence is, whatever that spark is in us, is always going to be an elusive quality. And certainly there are going to be all kinds of purists, uh, biological chauvinists, who will always want to believe that there's something intrinsically different about what uh, uh, the wetware between our ears does from what a computer does. I, I discussed it with a friend of mine, and we, we looked at the, the problem of micro-miniaturizing the amount of material you'd need for human intelligence. And we found the limit was something like uh, you could put five billion human brains inside one skull, which electronically think thousands of times faster than a human. Special programs are being conducted in many areas of the company to investigate artificial intelligence and its application. Nancy, please don't interrupt. I'm talking to Robert Sawyer. Robert, if we ever create an artificial intelligence, will it have to think like us? Well, I think that actually we have no evidence that there's any other way to think except pretty much the way that human beings think. We like oh, to think... Oh, you haven't been watching soap operas. No, I ha well, all right, yes. I mean, there are lots of human beings who can't accurately write the way other human beings think. But I think there really is a, a legitimate school of thought that's ignored in science fiction that says that there may be some 
uh, something intrinsically right about the way human intelligence works because with you know four and a half billion years to put it together on this planet this is the only solution to intelligence that has demonstrably worked we have inklings that dolphins and whales may be intelligent but we have no actual proof that they have a, a creative intellect on the on a par of a human intellect thanks robert i'll let you get back to your word processor all this ai stuff is pure speculation of course a friend faxed me up some excerpts from Roger Penrose's new book, The Emperor's New Mind, and he says, consciousness seems to me to be such an important phenomena that I simply cannot believe that it is something just accidentally conjured up by a complicated computation. It is the phenomena whereby the universe's very existence is made known. One can argue that a universe governed by laws that do not allow consciousness is no universe at all. What do you think of that, Miss Micro Memory? Listen to this. I would even say that all mathematical descriptions of a universe that have been given so far must fail this criterion. Oh, what does Miss Silicon think of that? It says it is only the phenomena of consciousness that can conjure up putative putative what the heck i'm sure you know what that word means theoretical universe into actual existence here eat this the true question of how you produce a genuine intelligence not just a really sophisticated answering machine which is what we have now hasn't been cracked but virtually everyone thinks that it will be cracked it's an article of faith I think it's probably right, but what's really hard to tell is the time scale. It could happen in 10 years or it could take half a century. Nancy, give me back my show or I... Within the generation of the young people like you who are alive today, you will be computing, you will be competing with electronic brains that are as smart as you are before you're dead. I'm dead? Who's... Who said I'm dead? No single human being will be able to encompass what a fully grown artificial intelligence might be able to encompass. It's a terrifying notion. Uh, I put up to that the idea that human beings must continue to uh, redesign themselves genetically and uh, physically in order to keep up with this, or else we will simply be living on the good graces of, of highly advanced uh, artificial intelligences. <laughs> So, Nancy, old, old pal, it looks like there will be artificial intelligences in the next 20 years or 60 years. But how come there won't be any 300 years from now, huh? The 23rd century, Star Trek. Gar and Judy, it's Commander Rick. You've written a few Star Trek novels. Why isn't there any AI in Star Trek? Well, because in 1966, there was no artificial intelligence. Um, basically, that's it. They, yes. they had their stodgy little computer voice on, on the show, and nobody thought about... Uh, putting in uh, ships run by artificial intelligence. When you think about it, of course, there, there are a lot of elements in the Star Trek universe that really make no sense. Why don't they beam down robots with television cameras to all those deadly worlds instead of guys with red shirts who get the shot for Captain Kirk? Um, and so basically what we, we did, sort mm -hmm. of like uh, Baker Street Irregulars coming up with an apology, we stated in Memory Prime that the reason we don't see artificial intelligences in the Star Trek universe is that the Federation, it, it has been clearly established, has strict um, laws against the, the practice of slavery. If you want to join the Federation, you cannot allow slavery to exist on your planet. True artificial intelligence would be self-aware, self-reasoning uh, intelligences, which could not be contained within a computer and forced to work, unless it was slavery. And if we want slaves, we have robots. <laughs> Wait, what about Lieutenant Data, the android in Star Trek The Next Generation? How does he fit in? Well, he's... Very well. Sure, 60 years yes. later. Mm -hmm. And he's, he chose to join Starfleet. Mm -hmm. And he's not property, and they devoted an entire show to that, written by one of the Star Trek writers, yep. Melinda Snodgrass. Mm -hmm.